So we are going to see now how derivative affect the shape of the graph. So notice the following, if f prime x is greater than zero on an interval i, then the function is increasing on that interval. If f prime x is less than zero on that interval, then f is decreasing on an interval. So let's see by graph. So suppose you have a function. So in this case, function is from here to here, f prime x is greater than zero. So f prime x is greater than zero here. Now from here to here, f prime x is less than zero. And then again, after this, f prime x is greater than zero. And you can see that f is increasing see that f is decreasing and here again f is increasing so derivative greater than zero means the function is increasing derivative less than zero the function is decreasing. What is the reason for that? There are many ways to look at the same thing. As you can see here that the tangent lines have positive slope here and here as well. These two, in these two regions, tangent line has positive slope. From here onwards, and whereas here the tangent line has tangent line, tangent line has negative slope. Now, if you want to see this algebraically, we can see the following. Uh, so f prime x is greater than zero implies limit as h goes to zero f of x plus h minus f of x over h this is going to be greater than zero that means for let's take h to be positive for some h positive we have limit as h goes to zero we have f of x plus h minus f of x over h is greater than zero. Now h is a positive, so this means f of x plus h minus f of x is greater than zero. So this means what? f of x plus h is bigger than f of x. So the idea is you have x here, you have x plus h, because h is positive, it will be in the right of x. And then you can see that if you compare this value and x plus h value, x plus h value is bigger than that value. So you see the function is gonna be increasing. Similar argument can be seen for function to be decreasing. So now let's see the following. Find intervals on which, on the x-axis, on which the function f of x, which is 3x to the 4 minus 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 5 is decreasing and on which it's increasing. So the idea is, let's look at an example again. Let's draw a continuous function, which is differentiable because this is a polynomial function. So if you look at a function, so from here to here, the function is increasing, but before it starts decreasing, it has, the derivative has to become zero, yeah. And then it starts decreasing and before it starts increasing again, the derivative has to become zero. So when you're asked about an interval, you need endpoints of the interval. These endpoints of the interval are provided from the points where the derivative is zero or derivative does not exist. So let's look at f prime x. 
So f prime x is going to be the solution Let's look at f prime x. f prime x is 4. So 3 times so 3 times 4 is 12x square cube minus 12x square minus 24x. And that can be written as 12x times x minus 2 times x minus x plus 1. And so f prime x equals to 0 would give us x equals to 0, 2, or x equals to minus 1. Now what we need to do is we need to, so these will give us the endpoints of the interval. So in the intervals are are how will you get the interval? we'll get intervals are minus infinity to minus one. And then what is minus one to two. And then the next interval is going to be, sorry, minus one to zero, then zero to two, and then two to infinity. So now what we want to do is we want to basically see what is the sign of the derivative, whether the derivative is positive or negative. So for that, we'll do what is called as the sign diagram. So sign diagram. For f prime x. So what we do in the sign diagram is we draw a straight line like this, the real number line. We mark the points where the derivative became zero. The derivative became zero at minus one, zero and two. Now, what we have is the following. We will choose a point in this interval to determine what the sign is. And note that the sign of derivative will be either positive or negative because to change the sign from positive to negative, it has to pass through becoming zero. Why? Because the function is is the derivative itself is a continuous function. So let's choose a point here. So any point from minus infinity to z minus one, excluding minus one. So we have, uh, let's take minus two, take minus two, minus two substitute in minus 12 x, sorry, 12 x times x minus two times x plus one. So we have, let me write it again, 12 x, times x minus two times x plus one. Now, when I put x equals to minus two, this will be negative. This part will be negative. And then this is also negative. So when you multiply three negatives, you get negative. So the sign here is going to be negative. That means the function is decreasing here. You don't need to find out the exact value. You just need to see what sign, what is the sign of derivative. Because we have already seen if the derivative is positive, the function is increasing. And if derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. So that's all we need to find out here for this part. Now let's take a point of our choice between minus one to zero, excluding the endpoints. So let's take a minus 0.5. When we take minus 0.5, we get this is negative, this is negative, but this guy is positive. So two negatives multiplied together give you positive. Similarly, let's take a point between zero and two. So if you look, look at point between zero and two, let's take one. So if you take one, you substitute, one will make this positive. One minus two is negative. One plus one is positive. So one negative makes it negative. Similarly, let's look at the point after two, say three. Three will keep this positive. So three will keep this positive, this positive, and this positive. So we get basically here, three gets positive. So the function is decreasing, increasing here, decreasing here, increasing here. So let me write that in words. So f is increasing 
on minus infinity to minus one union two to infinity and f is decreasing on minus so f is increased sorry my bad f is decreasing f is decreasing on decreasing or let's say f is increasing from where to where minus one to zero right not minus infinity minus one to zero and f is decreasing on minus infinity to because that's where the sign is negative union zero to two so it's all decided by the sign diagram another quick way to do this was notice that you have roots of multiplicity one so once you decide what is the sign here then the signs are gonna alternate now now this derivative also helps us to decide whether the function is increasing or decreasing sorry function has a local maxima or local minima so let's see so suppose we have f prime changes the sign so we are at c suppose suppose f prime changes sign from positive to negative so f prime is positive before c that means the function is increasing after c it start the f prime is negative that means stops decreasing so in this case we get what so this is increasing this is decreasing in this case we get local maximum so the f prime changes sign from positive to negative f has local maximum at c similarly if f prime changes sign from negative that means before c it was negative that derivative was negative that means the function was decreasing after c the function started increasing so in that case we get what f of c is local minimum now it can happen for example f of x equals to x cube let's look at this graph in this case you will see that the sign so what is the where does the derivative become zero f prime x equals to zero this gives us what this gives us 3x square equals to zero which means x equals to zero so when you draw the sign diagram now since the derivative is 3x squared it's positive here it's positive here so if the derivative does not change a sign you can you will get neither local maximum nor local minimum at c so that helps us now to solve the following problem so we have find all the local extrema of this function f of x equals to this so now we have already done the computation so i'm going to recycle that computation from this problem here example three so f prime x equals to 12 x times x minus one, two times x plus one. And we had sine diagram. Now sine diagram for what? Sine diagram for f prime x. Yeah, so sine diagram for a function means you're just checking where the function is positive or negative. So sine diagram for derivative is where you're checking where the derivative is positive or negative. So you mark these points again, minus one, zero, two. So first step is to find, step one, find critical points of critical numbers. That is C such that F prime C equals to zero or F prime C does not exist. Where C belongs to the domain of the function. Note that critical numbers are the only numbers which can be local maximum or local minimum and at those points the critical numbers come from the domain of the function and at those points derivative is either zero or does not exist so we have negative here as we saw earlier positive negative positive so in this case what happens is the sign changes from if it's negative it means it goes negative and then after that it changes to positive so this means f of minus one is local minimum. 
and this test is called first derivative test because you are checking you're looking at the sign of the first derivative right you're looking at first derivative so therefore this is called first derivative test so f of minus one is local minimum similarly f of zero sign changes from positive to negative so positive means the function was increasing after that it's decreasing so f of zero is local maximum now comes the third critical point so critical points are critical numbers here are 0 2 minus 1 so now what about f of 2 so let's see at f of 2 before 2 the function was decreasing after 2 the function was increasing or the sign of the derivative changed from negative to positive so you don't need to uh, memorize it when you draw it you can clearly see that f of 2 is local minimum but however we need to find out these values so let's substitute f of 0 f of minus 1 what is f of minus 1 if you put minus 1 you get 3 minus 4 minus 12 so 3 minus 4 minus 12 is 3 minus sorry f of so it would be 3 plus 4 minus 12 plus 5 so 3 plus 4 minus 12 plus 5 so 3 plus 4 so this is going to be 0 f of 0 is 5 and f of 2 is minus 27 so this is a profiling of local maximum local. Now let's look at the next example again. So what is f, f of x was absolute value of x is x if x is greater than or equal to zero and minus x if x is less than zero. And uh, this gives us f prime x is one if x is greater than zero minus one if x is less than zero now what about at zero at zero not defined at zero because undefined at zero because of a corner right so this means x equals to 0 because 0 does belongs to the domain of function since f prime 0 does not exist and 0 does belongs to the domain of function note that critical number should come from the domain of the function now what about sine diagram so sine diagram for f prime x so at zero, it's not defined, but we have before zero, it's minus one here, yeah. and after zero, it's one, so it's positive. So therefore, f of zero, which is zero, is local, what? Let's check it out. Before zero, it was decreasing, after zero, it starts increasing. So f of zero is a local minimum. So now our goal is to understand how the shape of the graph. So note the following, in this case, here also the function is increasing and here as well, the function is increasing, yeah. But if you notice in this case, the first case, the function, the derivative, the slope, or sorry, the tangent line lies below the curve. In this case, the tangent line lies above the curve, right? So we should be able to distinguish between these two shapes because after all, we are determining how derivative decides the shape of the function. Now note that first derivative in both the cases is positive. 
Why? Because the function is increasing. So function is increasing, the first derivative is positive. So how do we determine which of the cases, how will we able to capture this scenario? So notice the following. So first, let's look at the following graph. So in this case, we have that the, the tangent line lies below the curve. So such a thing is, such a shape is called concave up. So what is a concave up? So if the graph of the, if the graph applies above all the tangent lines on the interval, then we say that graph is concave up on interval i. So if this is my interval i, you can see that the graph is concave up. Now we want to understand how to capture that scenario. So let's see what can derivative really capture this. So we already saw that derivative cannot distinguish between these two guys, right? But notice the following. So let's take this point here. Now here at this point, the slope of the tangent line is the slope of the tangent line is the slope of the tangent line here is zero. So let's just draw this correspondingly. That means the slope of the tangent line. So if I'm going to draw from f of x, I'm going to draw f prime x and see what do we get. So here the derivative is zero. Now before that, the tangent lines have negative slope. They have negative slope, but it's going to become zero. So before this point, let me draw it properly. Before this point here, the tangent lines have negative slope. So at this time point, the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line is zero. But before that, it, the tangent line has negative slope. And after that, the, the slope starts basically what is positive and starts increasing. So this is how roughly the graph of f prime x may look like. So that means f prime x is an increasing function. And for every increasing function, if you take derivative of that, that's going to be greater than zero. That is same as saying f double prime x is greater than zero. So if the tan so we say that if the second derivative is greater than zero, then the graph is concave upward. Similarly, if you look at the other case, if the if the if what in this scenario, the function is concave downward, and you can check that the second derivative is less than zero. Okay, so rule of thumb, f double prime x is greater than zero on i, f is concave upward, smiley face, f double prime x is less than zero on i, f is concave downward. Yeah, smiley face. Now notice the following, for some graphs, you'll see that the function is concave upward and then it becomes concave down. So at this point, the function was so function was concave up from here to here. But after that, the function becomes concave down. Yeah. So this point becomes special point. This point P on the graph, this point is called inflection point. Similarly, not only that, if the graph changes from concave, so here it's concave down to concave up, even if it changes from concave up to concave down, then we get what is called as inflection point. So here the second derivative is greater than zero, here the second derivative is less than zero. Now if your function is continuous enough, and if you take the second derivative, 
as well and that's continuous what will happen is before it changes from less than zero to greater than zero the derivative should be second derivative should be zero or in this case if you look at one over x the function second derivative of f of x is first derivative is minus one by x square second derivative is two by x cubed so you see here the function is concave up here and it's concave down here it's concave down here but before it changes from concave down to concave up it has second derivative has to pass through the point where the second derivative does not exist okay. so we'll come to uh, how to find out the point of inflection in a minute okay so there is one good side effect of this so namely we get a second derivative test to check local maximum and local minimum so if you look at f of x equals to say f of x equals to x to the power four or let's take x squared. So the graph looks like this. So if the first derivative is zero, that means you're here. And if the second derivative is greater than zero, so that will happen when the graph is what? Concave up. So we get this shape here, right? So not only you have a critical point, but the graph function is concave up around that critical point. In that case, we get what? F has local minimum at C. Similar thing, we'll get F has local maximum at C if first of all, what should happen? F prime C is equal to zero. That means it's a critical point number. And not only that, second derivative has to be less than zero. That means the graph has to be concave down for it to have a, for it to have a local min maximum. However, if C, if F prime C equals to zero, and f double prime c is also zero, then the test fails. An example of that would be f of x equals to x to the four, f of x equals to x to the five. Yeah, so if you look at x to the four, oh sorry, x to the four and say minus x to the four. So x to the four graph looks like this like x squared but slightly more flatter around zero now here we have in this case let me call this as g now f prime x equals to zero at x equals to zero and f double prime x at zero is zero right but what happens here but f has local minimum Similarly, let's look at g of x. So g prime zero equals to zero and g prime doubles of second derivative zero is also zero, but g has local maximum at zero. Like say for example here. So this is how x to the four minus x to the four will look like reflection in X axis. So we get here, we get. So second derivative equals to zero, the test fails. So the test basically fails, or test is fails is same as inconclusive. So let's sketch the graph of the following function. So we have f of x equals to 3x to the 4 minus 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 5. So what are the steps in graphing this function? So first of all, we'll find the critical number. So f prime x is 12x cubed 
minus 12 x square minus 12 x so 24 x and we have already seen this in the upper part that is 12 x times x plus 1 x minus 2 so critical points are critical numbers are 0 minus 1 2 then i'm going to draw the sine diagram from before so sine diagram for f prime x so again we have already done this computation, so I'm just going to write it down. We have minus 1, we got 0, and we got 2. We also had minus plus minus plus sign. So the function is decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. And we have f of minus 1, which was 0 is local max f of zero which was five was local min so f of minus one was local minimum right because the sign is changing from negative to positive right so it's going to be local min f of zero is local maximum and f of two is local minimum and not only that, we found out what these values were. So this value was equal to zero. This was five, and this was minus, sorry, minus 27. Now we have seen the sine diagram for F prime. Now we need to look at the second derivative to see whether it's, it's concave up or concave down. So sine diagram for The sine diagram for f double prime of x. So for that, we have to look at the following. So take second derivative of x equated to zero or does not exist. But in case of polynomials, the derivative always exists. So we'll just equate it to zero. So we get what f double prime x equals to zero implies what is the second derivative of this? This will give me um, the second derivative is 3x square minus 2x minus 2. And that can be seen as 3. We need to solve this, but you see that there is no root which can be done by um splitting the middle term so you'll have to use quadratic formula so the roots are equals to zero when x equals to minus one plus or minus root seven over the whole divided by three so now we need to basically look at the sine diagram for f double prime so concavity so sine diagram for f double prime So how does that go? So you basically draw a straight line like this. You mark the where the second derivative becomes zero or does not exist. Yeah, that's important. Here in this case, we do not have a case of does not exist. So we have minus one minus root seven by three, minus one plus root seven by three. Now let's check a point before. So before this point, let's check uh, sufficiently large. So let's see, minus one minus root seven. So that is gonna be around, say minus, even if it is around minus nine, I can take a four here to check what is happening. So if I take a four and I substitute in this equation, you will see that 
this equation can be written as here it will have a positive sign here when you put zero you will get minus two so negative sign and here you'll have positive sign so f is concave down sorry positive sign so f is concave up concave down concave up so for f concavity now we have all the information to sketch the graph With this we are able to now draw the graph of the function so first we will so we need to draw a bit further down So the way it is, first we need to find out the points which are critical points. So the critical points are zero, minus one, two. So minus one, to minus one, zero, and two. So let's see, what is the value at minus one? So we need to scale down the graph. So we'll go five, one, five, 10, minus five, minus 10, minus 15, minus 20, minus 20, minus 25, minus 30. The reason for that is because the local minimum f of 2 is local minimum is minus 27 so f of 2 f of 2 is minus 27 so f of 2 is minus 27 so that point is going to be somewhere here so somewhere now what are the other pieces of information we have we have local 0 is local f of zero is five is local maximum so five is local maximum now f of one is f of minus one is also local minimum now f of minus 1.22 the function value is zero point so it's just slightly so it's here, minus 1.22, this is the inflection point, so it's just here. And similarly, f of 5.4, which is half up here, is also the function value is one. So these are the inflection points. So let's see. So before one minus root seven by three, before this, the function is, is what? Concave up. So before that, the function is concave up and it is decreasing all the way until minus one. Yeah. So it's decreasing all the way until minus one, but it's concave up. Before this, the function is basically concave up. So it's decreasing. So that the function basically after five zero the function starts decreasing all the way until what point so it starts decreasing but uh, we should mark the inflection point now so at 1.25 so at one so we'll have local minimum at two which is two point this is our local minimum so our local minimum is at two and uh, the function basically goes down so local minimum is at two it will cross x-axis at some point but before that it becomes concave now the concavity changes again at 1.1251 where it becomes what again from concave down it becomes concave up 
So it goes down quite steeply at one to become 13. So quite steeply so that one it becomes 13 and from concave down. So this is concave down now it changes concave up to basically go to first go to the local minimum and then it keeps on going basically local minimum after that also it's concave after that also it's concave up and it is what it is increasing after two so it's increasing after two so this is how the graph looks like